Well, welcome to personal vlog number 28 here. I'm going to call this one, Bowling is Still in My Blood. I mean, in my childhood, when I was 9 10 years old, I was in the YBC, the Youth Bowling Council here in Calgary, and for the first couple of years I bowled at the, this bowling alley no longer exists, especially the original one at the North Hill Center. I, I bowled at the Fairview Bowling Center, which now is long gone at the you know North Hill Center which is the first mall that was built in uh, Calgary there I actually had a bowling alley expansion there and uh, a movie theater that used to be there that now is long gone and what was unique about that bowling alley is that it had a you know parking sheltered parking and uh, you accessed the bowling alley I remember going downstairs from the mall there but uh, you know I did that for a couple of years and then like all things were run so we moved over to Chinook Center and you know that bowling alley is definitely still there and as I know it's still going strong and you know I bowled in the YBC 5-pin this is a game that's unique here in Canada 5-pin bowling which uh, each pins are worth different values and the perfect game is actually 450 instead of the traditional 300 that you get in 10-pin but I you know, I'm a fan of, you know, all bowling. Uh, five pin was definitely my specialty being in Canada and uh, being a proud Canadian myself. But, I mean, after I was too old to be in the YBC, which apparently I hear up to that time, up now you can bowl there until you're 21. Or that's how I thought I heard where in the street was. But uh, 18 was the uh, last year I can bowl there. And then that was also when I was finishing up high school. And then... You know, grinding through crummy jobs and uh, college there, and you know I did briefly join one adult league, which was fun there when I found the right crowd to uh, be with that wasn't stuffy. But uh, you know, eventually, it's always school and work gets in the way, and I haven't been able to really go bowling for on a regular basis for. Uh, almost 20 years believe it or not because 2001 was the last time I bowled full time in the league there and you know I think about it, I'll try to make a comeback and get back in it and uh, and that but then uh, you know my work hours are what they are or it's hard to uh, get in world bowl during the week when you gotta be up early and even there's Friday night leagues out there but uh, that gets tougher to do that when it's football season in the fall there, or, you know, if I uh, miss a few weeks here and there, and the next thing you know, you you miss half the season, and it kind of just uh, defeats the purposes of uh, being in the league. But, uh, I mean, the game's always in my blood. I mean, I I definitely was one of those bowlers that was rah-rah. I, I played to win, and, I mean, you know, some people are out there just to... I mean, of course, I had fun, too, but I had more fun, you know, winning and uh, doing the best I can, and racking up as much points as I can. I mean, in my 10 seasons in the YBC, I actually had two high singles for the boys and, uh, you know, the highest score in the uh, league. And they, they had it so that you can't have the high average triple and uh, singles so that you don't have one guy clean it all up. But the triple is a three-game total. And actually, I got two high triples too. So, uh, you know, four out of the 10 years, I... I won an individual award for my class that I was in with boys, which is pretty good if you ask me. And I never was able to get a high average, but, uh, you know, maybe one of these times, if I ever have time to get back into bowling here, uh, maybe that will find a way to get that high average trophy. But uh, I do think that the high triple one is a little more difficult to uh, get than the high singles because... You have to have a good day all day for three games to uh, to get uh, you know the high triple there because you can bowl one one good game and two crummy games or average games and then your triple's a little higher but not that much higher and uh, I mean my personal best in uh, five pin was three fifty eight and I did that in lead play and I mean a perfect game is four fifty and then. 823 was my high uh, triple, which 823, 
1350 is 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 the most possible you can get in five pin there, which I mean it's hard to get a perfect game in five pin than than there is in ten pin. I mean I follow a lot of bowling things on Facebook and that and you know bowling products and then you got people that actually say that you know they bowl the 900 which is 10 pin I'm talking about where a perfect game is 300 and did that three times and I mean 10 pin regular 10 pin that you see in the states and mostly worldwide is uh you know very common and I actually find that the 10 pin game is a lot more forgiving than the 5 pin game just because there's more pin action there. I mean, you have to be a little more skilled and more strategic to uh, bowl five pin, and you got to get in that right spot where you punch out the head pin. And I mean, the middle pin is five points, and you got the two on the outsides in the middle, of the middle center there. Those are three points, and then you got the two in the corners there. Those are two point each, so the whole rack is fifteen points. And how the math it works out the same where you carry over two frames if you have a strike. Bowling is one of those funny games that there's 10 frames in the game, but if you bowl a perfect game, you need to throw 12 balls. And uh, that's what's funny about bowling. In 10 pin, you only get two attempts per frame, but you get three attempts in 5 pin. And then, you know, if I want to get even more technical about bowling, I mean, you can find a lot of apps on Google Play, and I definitely love to play those bowling games, but, you know, there's a... I think it's called uh, Planet Bowling, I think it is, and you got all the variations of bowling possible. I mean, you got the 10 pin that most people are familiar with, and then you got the 5 pin, which is the game that I played with the most up here in Canada. But if you go in the Eastern uh, Eastern uh, Maritimes in Canada and the U.S. there, they got a couple different variations of bowling called Duck Pin and Candle Pin, which uh, both have 10 pins. The Candle Pin are just straight you know, look like candles, and then duck pins look like a smaller, fatter, you know, 10 pin that's compressed, but they look like flying ducks when you, when you, uh, you know, hit the ball, but in that game, you get three attempts for each frame, but that game is much, much, much harder. I mean, the perfect game is, uh, 300, and I think pros, and especially in candle pin, you know, they're, you know, they're, uh, you know, dancing down the street if they get, like, 130 or 140 in that game, and I mean, if you get 130, 140, and 10 pin, regular 10 pin, it's like, oh, you're just the average guy. Maybe above average, but, uh, you know, you got those two uh, variations of bowling. I've never been to that part of the country for bowling, and obviously I definitely want to uh, try that game. And then I know in Germany, they have a, a 9 pin game where you got a pin in the middle, and there's 8 around there. And, I know the term is called ringer, and I think there's a certain way where you, if you knock the pins around the pin and the, the red one in the middle last or something, you call it, you get a ringer. But uh, that definitely looked like a, you know, the, another interesting variation of uh, bowling. Uh, I guess that'll be something to come to mind if I ever go to Germany and, uh, you know, try nine pin bowling and try to throw some ringers. I mean, we use the same term, strikes and spares, where, uh, you know, strike is when you knock all the pins down on your first attempt in the frame, and the spares if you do it in two, where you clean the deck, and an open frame is, uh, you know, if you do neither, and you want at least at least the open frames as possible there, but, uh, you know, and that's the other thing that uh, I also wanted to do in the YBC, which I think that window was... Uh, closed and uh, the ship has sailed is I wanted to be uh, a YBC coach and I mean it's harder to do that when you're always busy working that but uh, people plus I'm single and just wouldn't look as good if I was coaching kids and the way society's like now but that's a different story but uh, you know going back to the YBC I mean the big tournament that they have is called the four steps to start in there where you qualify to get in and I made that tournament three times, and uh, all three times I got into the provincials because you have the qualification, and then you have the, you know, the the zones, which uh, you win that zone and you get into provincials, and then when you're in the provincials there, you try to get into nationals and represent your province. And I got to the provincials every time, but unfortunately, uh, things never worked out for me and my team that I worked with, and you always get the one person that suddenly 
pulls like a 400 plus game and carries that team to go go to nationals and represent their province and you know it would have been nice if I ever got to represent Alberta in the nationals and the only way I could do that now is if I ever got named to be a coach and I don't think that's going to happen now and you know I mean that was definitely the fun while you were young there you get to you know go into tournaments and of course, I always played to win. I mean, yeah, I always had fun. And I always had fun to play, but, I mean, the funny thing is, the game's also mostly mental, and, you know, I mean, it's, it's a fun game to have. It's a debate. It's a debate out there if you call it a sport. I mean, people say, well, yeah, but, you know, it's kind of that same level of golf, or, heck, I mean, you people look at bowling like billiards or pool or even darts, and people say, well... They joke and say, "Well, you get you get better as you drink." And I said, "I'm too serious of a bowler that I won't drink beer, you know, while I'm bowling. I might have one after, and I definitely not gonna drink before because, uh, you know, plus you know I'm I'm getting that age now that uh, the beer, you know, affects you much more and it takes more time to recover for it. But uh, I mean, it's a fun game that anyone gets to do, and I would definitely definitely highly recommend it. And you know the at least the Google Play apps that I have. That I mean, you got the PBA, which is the Professional Bowlers Association in the states, and you know if you ever made it to that, then you can make a good living or possibly do that full time if you were fortunate enough to uh, get to do that for a living. I mean, there's none of that in Canada for five pin. I know there's the Western Canadian Bowler Tour that I follow that on Facebook and. Uh, I actually did bowl with a couple of people that I see on there that, uh, you know, that's on that tour. And, I mean, they definitely were very competitive and won their individual awards, mostly the high average there. And, you know, there you met a lot of great people going bowling there. And, I mean, I missed that too. But, uh, you know, that's the harsh reality once you become an adult and, have responsibilities in that, but hopefully, maybe, just maybe, if I fortunate enough that I might get back into it when I get older and hopefully not work as much. But uh, the other thing, too, is that here in Calgary, where I live, there's no uh, bowling always that's close by that I can maybe squeeze in some bowling, uh, you know, and still get to bed at a decent time or uh, still be able to do my sporting events, going to train the sporting events, and uh participate in the league there but uh you know i mean what to do i mean it's just one of those things he did when you were younger that uh you have fond memories of it's i mean it's still in your blood uh i mean of course uh if i ever got back into it i'd have to temper my expectations knowing it's been so long since i've bowled again and i mean some people say it's like riding a bike but if you haven't done something for like 20 years uh it's going to you know, you're going to have to reteach yourself, relearn it. I mean, my five pin bowling average, I think, was around 206, 207. And it's still ingrained to me that I'm not a happy camper if I don't break 200 in five pin there because I'm so used to being within that range there. And if I bowl the 700 for my three game total in uh, lead play, I, I'm really happy with that because you yeah, average, obviously. 233 at least on the day which is still pretty good and I think once you get into the uh, you know almost uh, over 250 you definitely had a very solid game and it's definitely magical and special when you break that 300 and I definitely remember I was 13 and I threw my first six bagger and broke 300 and that was definitely a thrill and you know I it, well, after that, I think I just had one season, but it was still like five or six seasons that I at least was able to get one game in a, in a season of like, uh, I get about 30 weeks, if I give or take, where at least I get one game where I break 300 and bowl six in a row there. The most strikes I've thrown in a row was seven, and uh, that's definitely my personal best, and seven out of 12, I mean, that's more than uh, half a game, so, uh, I mean, that's definitely, you know, tough, to, I mean, it's, it's easier said than done, I mean, I mean, it's more to the game, and just go to lane, pick up ball, chuck it down the lane, and hopefully it 
hits all the pins you want to hit. But, uh, I mean, it's definitely one of those things you got to find yourself. And, uh, I mean, I used to have an inconsistent approach. I, you know, people almost call me Twinkle Toes, like Fred Flintstone. But then I had some bowling camps over the summer there where I tried to work on my consistency more and work on my standard approach. And that definitely helped a little there. But, uh, you know, bowling can be a funny game because you have different conditions of oil and uh, how you're feeling that day or just, you know, it's a game of inches, like in hockey or football or lacrosse or whatever when you do sports recaps where you talk about a team that uh you know just lost the game but you know if, if these events happened just before they would have won or uh that's also the worst part of going to tournaments is yeah they, it feels so damn good to win but the crush it, it sucks to lose especially if you lose by like single digits like damn if you would have gotten that one damn pin or if you did or someone else did they would be celebrating, you'd be celebrating with them, and they'll be crushing. But, uh, yeah, it's all the nostalgic memories of, you know, bowling. It's it's in my blood. You know, when I say in my blood, I'm not just talking about, you know, figuratively. I mean, I don't see bowling pins or balls come out when I when I bleed, but it's there. And uh, I still love the game. I, I enjoy it. And, obviously, the Wii, back, you know, Wii has that Wii bowling, which... Not too sure if it's that, is that really accurate. I mean, it just senses your motion in that. But, uh, I mean, it's hard to simulate, you know, virtual bowling with real bowling. And, I mean, it doesn't factor in all the, you know, conditions. I mean, I'm sure it even comes down to, you know, the humidity or what the temperature is like outside that day inside the building. So, uh, I mean, I could be very technical about bowling here. But this is all just talking about it. it's in my blood here. But, you know... I wish I had more time to do it, and, uh, you know, it is like one of those niche games like golf or uh, billiards or darts or pool, but, I mean, if they had a front plate and if I had a card, put it on, you know, how people say, you know, the most common one you see is that it says born to golf, forced to work. Well, I'm born, I'm born to bowl, but I'm forced to work, and work is all I do, and, you know, you can also go back to a couple personal blogs, it's been a tough economy, too, and, Still feel it's a tough economy. I mean, if you go back to personal vlog number 25 there. So, uh, anyway, it's my uh, nostalgia look at bowling and how it's still in my blood. And that's what this personal vlog was all about. If you enjoy everything I do on my YouTube channel, just make sure you hit like, subscribe. And I do personal vlogs or sporting recaps or talk about Calgary sports here. But, as I always say, I'll see you in the next video.